So I'm a small business owner. Both of my parents were small business owners. Both sets of grandparents were small business owners. And so it runs in my blood. And uh, my record store, called Stinkweeds, I opened when I was 19 years old. That store roots me in the community in ways that are hard for me to even explain. But I know my customers. I know their lives. I know their stories. I get involved. I know what their parents gave them last holiday season. I know the names of their children. Suffice to say, I'm a social worker that's cleverly disguised as a record store owner. But in that store over the years, I've noticed some changes. The hard-won enthusiasm of landing that first job, the customer coming in very excited to tell me, has changed into young people working very hard to get through college, going into debt and graduating, only to find out that there are no jobs available. I see parents work their fingers to the bone, only to find out that their children, who just graduated from college, won't have an opportunity to get a job in their field. There's a big change happening in the country, and I'd like to talk to you about how our personal spending habits impacts the opportunities for the next generation. Did you know that millennials are the first generation in US history who will actually acquire less wealth than their parents? Now, you may have some ideas about why this is. You may think that it has something to do with artificial intelligence or myriad problems facing our young people today. But what if I told you that our everyday spending habits impact the opportunities for the next generation? I don't want you to go out and support locally owned businesses because they need you. I want you to support locally owned businesses because I want your children to have a job. So I submit to all of you that we've actually forgotten how the economy works. We've forgotten that we're the ones in the driver's seat and the choices that we make every day directly impact the quality of life in our community and the opportunities for the next generation. We know that smart money should come back to us, but too often we're out there chasing that cheap price. And I'm gonna show you how that cheap is costing us a fortune. So on the left side of the screen, you're gonna see 15 Starbucks logos. And on the right-hand side of your screen, you see 15 independent coffee shops randomly selected from around the community. So you may not think much about when you go out and you buy your latte, but I'm gonna to talk to you about how the economy works and how dollars move through in a multiplier effect. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do is shout out Starbucks as the best corporate chain out there. They're the best ones in existence for two reasons. Number one, they're not in the business of subsidies. You may not know what that means, but a lot of big corporations move into town and they demand cash payment up front, called a subsidy. Cabela's store, you may be familiar with Cabela's, yes? They average $35 million per store in subsidies. That's like cash, free infrastructure. It's a 10-year tax abatement. That means you go in and buy a tent or fishing tackle, you pay your sales taxes, and they get to keep it for 10 years. The one Cabela's store in Arizona got a $68 million subsidy, okay? Back to Starbucks, they don't do that. They just show up and do business. Good on them, love that. Number two, they pay for the health care of their employees. A lot of big stores like Staples and others, they bring 65, 68% part-time employees with no health care benefits to our state. Those employees end up on the state health care plan. Who's paying for that? We are. So suddenly we realize those cheap prices are actually deferred billing, right? We're paying for that in a different way. So back to the slide, we have these 15 Starbucks locations. How many accountants does Starbucks employ here in Arizona because they do business here? What do you think? None. Zero, right? How about graphic designers? Do they employ any graphic designers here? Website developers? Payroll service providers? You get my point, it's a long list. Those are called secondary jobs, and it turns out they make the world go round, okay? Now on the other side of the screen, 15 independent coffee shops, they support 15 independent graphic designers, did those logos, 15 website developers, 15 payroll service providers, or 15 accountants. Those are dollars moving through the economy, and then you could look at the third time the dollar moves through the economy, when the janitorial supply company 
keeps the offices clean of the accounting firm, and the accounting firm is only here because the local businesses hire them. Now, I was giving this talk to a conference of graphic design firms uh, just maybe a few months ago. And I had a woman sitting right up here in the front row, and she smacked herself on the forehead really hard right at this part of my talk. I mean, people could hear it. And we st we, I stopped, and I said, oh, my gosh, ma'am, are you okay? And she said, yeah. She said, I'm just really mad at myself. She said, I'm mad at myself because it never occurred to me that Paula, here working at Starbucks, she's working every day to essentially build wealth for shareholders that she may never meet. Now, it's great that she has a job and she's working her way through college, but that money is leaving the state. On the other side of the screen, you see Carlos, and Carlos is a local business owner, and those dollars are staying and moving through the economy when he hires a graphic design firm or a website developer or a payroll service provider, and when those companies go out, and employ other people in the community. That's how we all stay employed. That's how we keep our communities thriving. Now, this woman that smacked herself in the forehead, she was mad at herself because she had a graphic design firm. She said, I used to have eight employees, and today I have five. And it looks like tomorrow I'm going to have four. And it never occurred to me until right now that I've been spending all of my money with companies that will never hire me. And she thought to herself, I have to get out there and actually meet the business owners that actually might need a graphic design firm. So when we think about this in the big picture, we think about this as the Starbucks example, let's spread that out across the country. We could have 30,000 Starbucks locations, and they're still only going to support one accounting firm, and one graphic design firm. And that graphic designer, by the way, has his feet on the desk right about now because they ain't going to update that logo anytime soon. Okay? You get my point. This money moves out of our economy. And a lot of people think to themselves, well, that's economy of scale. But it is not cheaper. It is not cheaper to buy a, a latte at a Starbucks than it is a local business, despite the fact that Starbucks is a fantastic company. Okay. So what I see in the country is that we're dividing into two camps. We're dividing in the camp that prioritizes convenience versus the camp that prioritizes relationships. Knowing the farmer that grows your food. Knowing the two sisters here that went out and started their own coffee shop and they get up every day passionately to try to build a better community. We know that supporting locally owned businesses keeps more dollars recirculating, more job opportunities for the next generation, but also they're critically important in building relationships. And in fact, the Knight Foundation issued an enormous study that showed connection to place is the single most leading indicator in places that have prosperity. And that when people love their place, and they do business locally, and they build those relationships, they're also more likely to vote, they're more likely to volunteer, they're more likely to give charitably. So when you think about the locally owned businesses, I want you to look at your own spending habits and think about how you could shift just 10% of your spending from a national to a local company. Now, if you looked at your spending and you thought, well, I'm spending about 10% locally now, I want you to get to 20%. If you're at 40%, I want you to get to 50%. Because if everyone in a community the size of Tucson shifted just 10% of their spending, it would create 130 million new dollars recirculating through this community in one year. It would create 1,600 brand new jobs for a simple 10% shift. It's critically important that we think about the diverse ways that we can spend money locally. Get a local haircut, get a local oil change, go out and support a local independent coffee shop. If you want to think big, move your money to a local community bank or credit union. You can be sure that that money is stayed in this community and relocated and, and recirculated through loans out into the small business sector. So as a quick last reminder, the price of convenience is jobs. The price of convenience is quality of life in our community. It's a hefty price tag. Just this last holiday season, 
we Americans spent $680 billion. Just imagine if we had spent that like we wanted to create jobs. Thank you. Thank you.